Hi, this is Luke from Talksteer, and in this video I want to talk about these wireless Apple CarPlay screens. They're popping up all over the place, they're quite cheap, you see them on eBay, Wish.com, Temu. Uh, and I want to talk to you and, say, and basically show you the pros and cons of these, and let you make your mind up whether you think they're any good or not. And uh, now I want to say that this screen has not been sent to me, I bought this for my own money. And my, this review is completely 100% honest, and it's not even an affiliate link in the description below. I just wanted one for my car, and I thought I'd share my experiences. Now, you're probably in the same situation as me. You've got a slightly older car. Maybe you don't have a double DIN cutout, uh, and you're thinking maybe one of these screens is easier, and I'll use with the factory units. And that's exactly what I thought. Now, in short, I'm going to say this was an excellent purchase for the car, and I'll show you why. Uh, it's not perfect, but for £70, it's added a lot of functionality. I made the car feel a lot more modern. Now I'm going to go and fire this up and I'll show you from a cold start how quick this boots up. It's really quick actually, so um, let's turn it on. Roughly about five seconds maybe. Well, actually we booted up. Give it a few more seconds for Apple CarPlay to connect and then we're away. Okay. Well, as you can see, we have a full CarPlay screen here. It looks really good on the dash, and I'm actually quite happy with how this is mounted. Uh, it looks almost OEM, but it's not quite. But the first thing that strikes you when you turn this particular screen on is that it's really bright, it's really clear, it's got a nice glass front, it looks quite high quality, and the plastics used are really nice as well. And it's actually quite sturdy as well, so you, you actually drive around, it doesn't jiggle over bumps. Now, there's one downside, and that is it's just not the most responsive of a light touch where other screens probably would have registered that. Give it a little bit more of a heavy touch as a digitizer, works absolutely fine, but that's the biggest trade-off so far I've found. Um, now, I'm not going to explain Apple CarPlay because you can find that anywhere works the same regardless of what system it is. So I want to talk more specifically how this screen works. What's the extras that surround it? What type of connectivity do you have? How is it mounted? Uh, all that kind of stuff. And one thing that was really, really important to me with these screens is that I can actually turn it off and I can with this. So I swipe down from the top. Uh, at the right here, we've got a day, night and off button, which is super nice. And when it's off, it still plays all the music absolutely fine. You can also have a manual slider for the brightness as well, which is nice, as well as volume control and skip uh, buttons to skip back and forth. Another feature that's really nice, it's got an equalizer. I think that's a temp band by looking at it. And it's just, you know, a lot of OEM systems have a two or three band equalizer. So we have to go to a temp band. It's much better for being able to, you know, just tweak your music to what you want. Um, this is the normal interface you have. And it doesn't have an amazing amount of features. But for the money, I really can't complain. Apparently, this does have Android Auto as well. But I've not tried that. Um, and you can plug stuff in like SD cards, little micro SD cards and USB sticks in the side. Again, I've not really used that, I just want it for Apple CarPlay, and for that, it's worked absolutely phenomenally. It's never dropped a connection. It connects almost every time against the car with, uh, without any problem. Uh, so it's actually been super stable so far, which is something that really surprised me. I thought it was going to get a lot more bugs with how this worked. Now, there's two ways of connecting this to the car, because that's the other thing you're probably thinking. You've got an older car, how do I connect it? It might not even have an auxiliary input, because my Volvo from factory doesn't either. And that's where you can either use a 3.5 millimeter jack that's on the side if you do have an auxiliary input. But if you don't, you can actually use the FM transmitter. And that's simply a case of setting the frequency here. And then on the radio down below, you can select your frequency. So if I choose uh, 108, it will lock into that and musical play. So uh, and the quality is actually pretty good for FM. There's not much static, there's not much interference. You're just limited by the typical FM uh, audio quality as you go through it. So if you're on a car that doesn't really have too much of a good sound system, you probably won't notice. Now this Volvo for a factory system actually sounds pretty well, and that's why I wanted to go through uh, the 3.5mm connection. And that's been has been clearer. Um, but I have noticed one problem, and if I turn the car on, you may hear us. Now I'm sat here with the engine on and no music playing and you might be able to hear this. You hear how much, in, how much interference there is? There is lots. And this gets worse when I rev the car. Now this only happens when it's on a wired connection. 
when it's wireless, that isn't a problem. And it's because of something called the ground loop effect. And essentially because this is wired into the car's electrical system, as the alternator pumps uh, electricity into the battery, it's just getting transferred as noise and coming through the speakers. And obviously, that's kind of unacceptable to have. Thankfully, it is easily eliminated by this extra little adapter I bought, about £10. It's a ground loop inhibitor, and all this does is goes in line between the uh, auxiliary input on your car and the cable that's coming out of this CarPlay unit. So if you just listen to this, uh, in my glove box, this is where mine plugs in. Yeah, this is plugged in, as loud as it goes, there's the slightest bit of static now, but it's completely gone. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you're running into the same problem with one of these and it completely solves the issue. So just a quick side note, so some people are probably thinking what's this box, uh, the Volvo V70 doesn't have an auxiliary input. This is the Ator Digital Music Changer, it's actually a Bluetooth receiver. What this does goes into the back of the head unit, into the multi-changer port. So the car thinks it's got a multi-changer attached, it's actually just an interface that gives you USB, SD, uh, Bluetooth and auxiliary. These are pretty good as well, but this is what I'm using to actually pump the wired connection into the car, and it works actually quite well. So I need to tidy these wires up, but that's where it hides for now. Just before I wrap this video up, I want to show you how it's mounted into my car. So I'm just going to turn this off and unmount it. <laughs> so um, this is how mine's mounted in. I'm going to give you a view of the ports as well. So on the sides, we've got a USB connection, which can be used for wired CarPlay as well, in case you're wondering about that. Auxiliary out, a camera in, and then the SD card, and here's a USB-C port. Now also bear in mind with this unit, the USB-C port is 12 volts, not 5 volts. So if you're using a 5 volt phone charger, it won't power this unit. So um, you probably will have to use the cable that comes with this. And I've just got mine... As you can see, booted down below the dash. Uh, behind my air vents, comes out down here uh, where the cigarette lighter is. Uh, it's also quite useful. It's got a USB socket on it as well, so I can charge my phone using that, uh, which I have been. And uh, as for the mount, this one only comes with one style mount, which may be good or maybe bad for certain people. It was good for the V70 because it does contour pretty well to the dash and you can alter the angle and the height a little bit. So I was able to get a pretty good fit. However, there's nothing like a windscreen mount or a air vents mount, so depending on certain cars, like the, the, the fitting's going to be hit and miss. So also bear that in mind when you're buying one. Um, I'm just going to give you a good look of the outsides of this unit because they do tend to not have any branding on them, and there's quite a few of these different type of units floating around. So this one has no physical buttons on the outside, and it has screws on the end. So if you're trying to get that same unit, that's what this one is like. There is also another one that's a similar size. It does have a couple of physical buttons along the top. So uh, I'm not quite sure what that one's like. So overall verdict, actually pretty good. I was very, very surprised. I thought it was going to be a pile of trash when I bought it. Uh, this one was £70 from Timu. I'll try and leave a link to the most similar one on there. That seller doesn't sell us anymore. There is a few floating around on there. Uh, your mileage may vary. There's a few of these floating around. So I don't know if they're all the same, but this one was pretty good. Except for the two small issues I found with the touchscreen not being the most um, most responsive and the bigger one being that sound to come to the speakers. So that adapter really, really helps. But overall, it's been one of the best upgrades I've done to my car. It makes it feel a lot more modern. looks almost OEM. Um, and it's been much better than the old double din style I went for like a few months ago, which just didn't really work out properly. Didn't fit correct and it cost a lot more than this. So this was a better solution. So... I'd say if you're gonna think, uh, if you're thinking again one of these, might be worth having a go. I'm certainly happy I did. Your mileage may vary. Let me know in the comment section below if you if you bought one of these, what you think of them. But until then, uh, until the next video, thank you for watching, and as always, see you soon and take care.